What's up, y'all? I'm here to teach you a hands-down best way to do RDO. We're gonna start with the kill here. We're in between kills. You're gonna keep it nice and simple and quick. Hands down the best way. I'll show you here. All right, so you wanna set your quick players to uh, protect item, protect range, rigor. Freeze him right away at the start of the kill. Stand about five tiles away from the north wall. Watch out for the mage attack when he leans back and sends out a white orb. You wanna to switch to mage. It is a DPS check, so below 300, 296 is the magic number, all right? There it is, one shot from my bow, two shots from my bow. Now I freeze him. He moved one tile, okay? Now I'm gonna be going for 146. That's the next key threshold. All right, it's probably gonna happen here. Nope, next one. Okay, so one shot, two shots, freeze again. And there you go, now we're just finishing the kill. He's not gonna unfreeze again. That is how you zero movement, three freeze RDO, takes zero damage as a kill, no kiting, don't have to move. Super easy, you can get like 50 kill trips because you'll hit these checks more often than not. And when you don't, I can show you what to do to like make the kills quick and take as little damage as possible as well. Um, he might unfreeze here, so yeah, I'll switch to melee there. Yeah, yeah, that's the three freeze method. It is hands down the best way to kill RDO. It's literally the way I always do it. Um, you have to hit those DPS checks for it to be effective. If you don't hit those DPS checks, you have to kind of work your way around it. So I'll try to do a kill where I don't hit the DPS checks, and I'll show you that too. Oops. Okay, so let me show you a scuff kill real quick, and we'll see if we can like show you the better way to manage it. So the reason we stand a little bit away from the wall is in case the kill goes scuffed. This one's going to be clean though. So two shots, this is the second one, and freeze him again. He got two tiles on that one. As you can see, like you usually hit these thresholds pretty handily. Um, so showing you a scuff kill might be a little hard here. This will be another three freezer. So there's the first shot, there's the second shot, freeze again. Uh, he's not going to reach me. I, should, I didn't even have to step back. Uh, so yeah, there you go, there you go. But the reason we, we keep it some space from the back wall is just in case the kill goes scuffed. So I'm going to show you, and we don't, hit, we don't hit the DPS checks. So I'll show you what that looks like and how you can handle that to try to save some damage. But this is how often he drops food and supplies. It's like all the time. So that's why you can stay out here like pretty much indefinitely if you're not taking very much damage. And with this method you don't, and it's like super chill and easy. Um, I'll just wait for him to spawn here. Hopefully a here doesn't show up. I've been getting crashed a lot trying to make this guide. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. All right, so I'm gonna do a little damage here, but I'm gonna eventually step off because we wanna have a scuff kill. We wanna not hit the check. I might not have to. It's gonna be pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna step off now. Okay, so now he's about to unfreeze. And what I do in this situation is I uh, just switch to mage or switch to melee and phase tank him until he roars he just did and then i'll freeze him when the roar is over and step back again and now the reason is i have some space against the wall is in case that happens on the first check now i have enough space that if i hit the next check and i'm about to first shot second shot pew pew one two freeze that's the one tile freeze and now he's not going to reach me on that one either so i can resume doing a three freeze kill um, so that is why I keep a little bit of space from the wall. One other thing to mention, camp north in the lair, do not camp south, um, because camping uh, south, uh, if you camp north, there's a splat and a delay before people can act when they enter the lair. And if you're north, you will see that splat. And then if you run freezes, just do a little face tanking and finish the kill. Um, you will see that splat. And he dropped food, of course. He drops food all the time. So you'll see that splat, and you'll get a chance to teleport for free before they can act and TV you. So that's why you camp north. If you camp south, then you wouldn't see them during that splat. They would run into your field of view free to act and get a chance to TV you for free. Being by the exit is a little bit handy, but it's not worth the fact that you just get a chance to teleport for free if you can't north and it puts you further away from RDO. So I definitely highly recommend that you can't north. Okay, so I'll try to chill and do some kills here, hopefully not get crashed and talk about requirements. Your requirements to come out here and do the three freeze method is to have 60 range and a crossbow. You simply will not hit the DPS checks if you do not have a crossbow. So you wanna make sure that you do that and have the best setup possible. Um, the more you hit these DPS checks, the less damage you're gonna take and the more chill your trips are gonna be. Um, so 60 crossbow, you wanna have 94 for uh, 94 magic for ice barrage, 79 for entangle is also decent enough. There's one shot, two shot, freeze. Pew, pew, freeze. All right, when he roars. When he hits 160, 146, as well as 296 HP, it's pew, pew, freeze. One, two, freeze. Um, that's, that's the three freeze method. Uh, so, yeah, you also want to have the fr uh, ability to do ice barrage, uh, stitch the range in a crossbow, and you need to have full protection prayers, and 44 for eagle eye, ideally. Uh, that's the only requirements. You can come out here with 60 and a crossbow. You'll probably not hit your uh, GPS checks and have to kite a lot, but it's a good way to train and make some money. Your kills will go decently quick with the crossbow carrying you. Um, yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, let's talk about, there's no quest requirements or anything, so don't worry about that. Uh, let's talk about gear. Uh, I'll probably leave to talk about gear after this kill because I want to show you my gear setup. So let's talk about alternatives. So you just hit 283, that's shot, shot, that's two, freeze. And he moves one tile. If you time it correctly, he will move no more than one to three tiles. So it's guaranteed. He just hit, all right, fell under, one shot, two shot, freeze. And that time he moved two, but that's fine. Like he's obviously not even gonna come close to reaching me. And yeah, yeah, you see you see how it's just easy, smooth and chill and like no damage. Like this, it's such a good method. The kills are so easy. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the gear loadout that I recommend that you bring. Um, Void is slightly better than Masori, uh, but it's risk six mil, whereas this risks like 700K. So that's why I bring this instead. Um, one thing is that the Masori Shaps are here for best in slot accuracy, but they don't give you a max hit. So you don't lose very much damage if you take these off and replace these with Black Dehyde, and then take out like an Armadil God Sword or a Void Waker to do some anti PKing. So if you want to anti PK, really good setup, just drop the Shaps. Um, uh, Void's a little bit better, like I said, but it's not really worth the risk to me. Obviously, like, you get more three freeze kills um, if you get, like, a better setup. So I recommend doing as good of a setup as you can reasonably do. And this is, like, the best that you can do without bringing, like, you know, over five mil risk. Um, I have enough Divine Range Impulse to stay out there for literally an hour. Um, I've made it as deep as, like, 50 minutes before, before a PKer finally showed up. And, yeah, I was good on food, good on supplies. Like, that's, that's just the nature of doing this method um, and all the food that he, and uh, re restore that he drops is that he'll keep you supplied. And you'll be able to stay out there until someone crashes you, which usually happens within like five to six kills. But in the middle of the night, you can probably stay out there for like 20 or 30 trips on a pretty regular basis, which saves you quite a bit of time over just the face tanking method. And as you can see, it's not very hard to get those freezes off. Um, yeah, so it's nine restores, a sand few. Uh, I would bring 150 blighted ancient ice sacks. I don't really have enough. Let me get some more. Uh, and then I would also have about 1,200 charges in your web weaver, and that should keep you uh, good, even if you stay out there like the full time. And yeah, yeah, that is like the setup. That's the requirements. Um, I'll also talk about Callisto. Uh, I prefer Ardeo over Callisto. I usually prefer the multi bosses because the multi bosses are usually better money. But Callisto hits through range prayer, and so as a result, uh, you get like two or three kill trips, and banking takes forever out there. If you don't die, it's really easy to die too. Um, and so as a result, you get like 18, 20 kills an hour, which is a lot less than RDO, which is like 45 to 55. If you if you really pop off, you can maybe like push 55. Um, so as a result, three kills per hour higher means that RDO, or like three times as many kills per hour means that RDO is actually better money. Unlike Venonatus and Spindle, unlike Vedion and Calvarion, uh, the singles boss is actually the better money with the bears. Unless you're in a team. Team Callisto is perfectly viable. It's pretty comfy. But if you're in a solo, yeah, it's just... It's it's generally not worth. Um, and also, that's on the same note, I want to mention this for all the wildy bosses. Um, if you're after pet, if you're after uh, pickaxe, or if you're after the rings, you should actually always come to singles, even with the spiders and even with the skeletons, uh, just because kills per hour is faster. Uh, it's like so much faster that it's going to be faster to get those drops because the drop rates aren't much worse. Like it's two times KPH at Spindle. It's two, uh, it's two times KPH at Calvarion versus their counterparts. And it's about three times at RDO. Um, the pickaxe, pet, and uh, rings drop rates are not two times worse at the singles bosses. They're quite a bit better than that. So as a result, it's faster to do them there. Um, if, you're do if you're going for money, hilts, and um, weapon pieces, then uh, you, want, you want to go to RDO, you want to go to Venonatus, and you want to go to Vedion. So multi-bosses for the spiders, multi for the skeletons, and singles for the bears. Uh, just because those are the best options. That's pretty much all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, see you. I'll see you in the skeletons guide. I already have a Venonatus guide out, um, so if you want to see that, check it out. Um, I'm put, like, putting out a guide for the skeleton bosses soon, Vedion and Calvarion, so keep an eye out for that too. All right, I'll see you around. This is my active boss right now. I'm trying to get pet, um, so yeah. yeah, maybe you'll see me out here. Uh, happy hunting, and I hope it was helpful.